This is the Sunshine Cathedral perspective. What church thinks about porn? And can there be a porn-addicted superhero saving Christianity? Anyways... Porn used to really affect you. You'd be out of it for days while Hamster Man was out saving the city. That was sort of a career low point. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had to get porn out of my life, but nothing I tried on my own worked. I tried cold turkey, disgusting. I tried freezing showers, not my hottest moment. I even worked overtime. <laughs> yeah, you arrested your own mother for jaywalking. Hey, guys! Also, don't forget, you tried a whole bunch of filters and firewalls, too, but those just weren't enough. Especially for me. I'm impervious to fire and walls. And you can just turn them off. Filters aren't a solution. They're a tool to help along the journey. But alone, they can't create lasting change. Yep, the filters, the firewalls, even all that training with the human bat, none of it worked. Because in the end, I was always by myself. And they never allowed me to confront the root of the problem. Eventually, the temptation would get too strong, and I just never had the willpower to keep going. Trying to quit porn alone was like trying to climb a ladder in a giant hamster ball. I needed more. I needed someone I could trust to hold me accountable. I needed an ally. Dude, exactly. <laughs> you needed the wingman. <laughs> yeah, that's why I love the Victory app from Covenant Eyes. It's more than just a filter. Screen accountability lets you see what I see. And knowing that helps reduce the temptation immediately. Covenant Eyes was a game changer. I could finally help you in a tangible way. I knew when to reach out, what to talk about, the notifications, the extra content, and everything else. Founder Ronald DeHass of Covenant Eyes in a new ad campaign warns fellow Christians about the dangers of online erotica employing a superhero addicted to pornography as a cautionary tale. The campaign featuring TikTok videos promotes the Covenant Eyes app, which tracks a user's internet activity and sends reports to an accountability partner. According to DeHass, pornography addiction is widespread, affecting even young boys and possesses a significant societal crisis. De Haas refers to a study, The Porn Phenomenon, which highlights the prevalence of online addiction among Christians, revealing that 57% of pastors and 64% of youth pastors have struggled with it. Of those still using, 87% feel immense shame, and 55% live in constant fear of exposure. Moreover, 70% of youth pastors have had teenagers confide in them about their addiction, with the majority being boys in high school or middle school. However, de Haas remains optimistic, citing the Covenant Eyes app's assistance to over 1.5 million users in overcoming porn addiction. De Haas also emphasizes the spiritual dimension of the issue, attributing pornography addiction to demonic influence. Notable users include Republican Mike Johnson, who uses the app with his son for accountability. Ironically, Anti-LGBTQ plus activist Josh, Josh Duggar also utilized the software but is now in prison for possessing child abuse images. He apparently found a way to get rid of the software's reporting feature. The question is, will this porn addict superhero be able to save Christians? Give me a break. I mean... I don't even know where to start with this, but let, let me let me say that in my youth, we didn't have the online ability, but we had magazines. We, we there has always been porn. And to say that you painted it, dirty pictures on cave walls. I remember that. Oh, my goodness. Um, yesterday, I'm watching <laughs> a show and um, the, the, the one of the persons was talking about all of the wrong things about sex and the person put up a Grecian vase <laughs> and there was images of of people having sex. So it's or playing the, leapfrog. 
No, this 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 this, this, this there was no way of calling it anything oh. but what it was. <laughs> the point I think that I'm making is that we're using the word addiction. Mm. And I don't know that that is the proper word to use. I, uh, you know, we, we here at this table often talk about control. And sometimes that's what it is, that somebody's trying to control what you're doing instead of explaining to you that what you're experiencing, especially in teenage boys, what you're experiencing is becoming an adult having feelings that maybe you don't fully understand and maybe the erotica is something that you can talk about in a positive way that you are beginning to become different that you have a responsibility to yourself and to society to be a, a grown-up to, to 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 be a sexual um, grown-up to not abuse anyone or anything and that if you're looking at magazines in my day or at um, videos in the current day you're not a bad person you are living naturally and to to have someone tell you that you have to be accountable for what you're doing that scares me more than anything. Mm -hmm. What do you mean accountable? What, what, to whom? Yeah, and to whom? Yeah. And, and who is this accountability manager? Mm -hmm. and, and why are they watching you watch something? Yeah. I mean, they're not physically watching you watch something, but they're counting the number of times you went mm -hmm. to Pornhub and saying to you, that's a terrible thing to do. Uh-uh. I, I, I don't go for that. Well, I mean, this is obviously from a sex negative uh, environment anyway. I mean, I guess you can have compulsive behaviors about anything. I right. guess you can shop so much that it hurts your life. I guess you can gamble so much that it hurts your life. You can drink so much that it hurts your life. I mean, uh, if, if you're doing something that's keeping you from interacting with other people, it's keeping you from doing your work, it's keeping you from, you know, raising your kids. It's keep, yeah, if something is so distracting to you that you can't function, then that's probably a problem. I don't think everyone who likes looking at naked folks, though, <laughs> is addicted. Oh, uh, it's a weird word, isn't is it? It's is a weird word, I, I, and I think it's it's a word that they're using just to shame people, to add to add to the shame. But you know, porn can also there's also uh, uh, porn novels. You know, porn can be mm -hmm. porn can be descriptive. It's not always pictures, it's sometimes words. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, of a story about a guy who married his half sister uh, and then sold her to a king. Mm. Uh, and then when the king found out that she was already married, mm -hmm. uh, he was unhappy about it. So, uh, he gave, he gave her back, but he'd already sort of paid the dowry for her. Mm -hmm. So this guy, uh, sort of got rich by selling his sister wife, uh, to some other dude to be his wife. Well, that's some pretty, that's some pretty gnarly, that's pretty gnarly porn story. It's also the story of Abraham and Sarah yeah, in the Bible. A, that's a good book. Yeah. Sookie, sookie now. That's a, <laughs> uh, uh, there, there is, there is a, a, a small book, booklet really, just eight chapters, uh, about uh, a man and, and a woman, and they're not married, uh, not yet anyway, and uh, the all eight chapters is just them screwing. Well, there's one chapter where she's masturbating on her own, thinking about him, but the rest of the time they're screwing, and with oral sex, and, and the missionary position and they're doing it outdoors and they're doing it indoors and sometimes they're doing it with a chorus of women watching and singing about it and and of course this is the biblical book known as the song of songs uh some people would call it the song of solomon uh so i'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this guy who he had to work seven years this story he had to work mm. seven years to, to marry the woman he loved and this father-in-law snuck him in uh, the wrong sister so then he had to work seven more years so he wound up with two wives and then he also wound up uh, with two women servants, and then he had children by all four of them. And there's this one scene where where one wife is negotiating with the other. I'll give you some of these, some of this fruit I've been picking if I can have a night with our husband. And uh, it's it's some pretty wild stuff. And of course, that's the story of Jacob in our Bible, Jacob and, Ra and Leah and Rachel. Um, so over and over, I mean, there's this there's this wild story about a, about a teen girl gets knocked up she, had, she hasn't even been with anybody and still she just gets knocked up and uh, of course we tell that story every Christmas uh, so it's just really hello really um, there, there's this story of a of, of a man in Judges 19 oh I gave it away it's the Bible again um, <laughs> that uh, he, he's given he's given shelter for the night with his concubine and a bunch of people come and they want to rape him they're like send this guy out so we can do all kinds of wrong things to him and uh, and the, the host say, oh, no, don't do this to our guest. And the guest says, oh, I got this. Throws the concubine out at him, locks the door and goes to bed. And, of course, she's been done all kinds of wrong 
uh, and is completely uh, devastated the next morning, her hand on the doorknob trying to get in. Uh, and then he's angry that this has happened to the woman he tossed out to the gang. And then he chops her up and sends parts to all of the tribes and it starts a big, ugly, nasty war. Now, of course, nowhere in this story does it say the woman is dead when he starts hacking. So that's a gross sort of snuff film sort of story right there. But like I said, that's Judges 19 in the, in the Holy Bible. So, yes. There are some disturbing stories. Some of them are in, are in picture form. Some of them are in film form, form, story form. But if just reading or looking at stuff and finding some value in it or pleasure in it makes you an addict, I got really bad news for you Bible readers. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Well, you left out one kind of unique scene. Mm. Oh, I left out a dozen. You left, well, <laughs> I, I'm thinking about somebody who was whipped up Cavalry Hill. Oh, uh, right through the village, right through the village, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of scenes in that Bible that we know as is all these wonderful scenes. And whereas he was not enjoying it, people, people got all people, people to this day Get just off. weeping and just in oh. love. And, and so, yeah. So, if, again, if you've associated love with violence, that's one of the problems that people do have with porn. Is that it doesn't give a realistic way of relationships or, you know, of, of how, you know, attraction works or whatever. Well, if somebody being whipped up Golgotha and, 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 and nailed to something and Get spit on off. and beat up, if that's, what, if that's what makes you weep with joy, oh, look what he did for me. You've got some warped images of love. You've got some warped images of what goodness looks like. So yes, if, what, if, if the problem with porn is that it warps sexual reality, I've got some bad news for you, and you call it good news. And all I want to say this about this, uh, about this covenant eye, this covenant eye app, and the wingman concept, mm -hmm. the only thing that comes to my mind is this cartoon I used to grow up with. Here I come to save the day, mighty, mighty mouth. mouth. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, it doesn't work that way, folks. Get over yourselves. And you know, as a kid growing up, the only thing I remember about porn as a young kid growing up is that my older brothers would always hide the Jet magazine. Jet. Oh, because of the because model. of the centerfold. Yes. I could not look I at the Jet magazine that. because of the centerfold in it. Woman in a bathing suit. Yeah. It was all and Cosmopolitan and, and, and National Geographic. Yeah. But these oh, are National things. Geographic. And the yeah. Sears catalog. Yeah, Net Hello. Sears catalog. Yes. So this kind of stuff has been around for a long time. Yes. Back to when Kevin did paint the walls uh, in the cave. <laughs> so you know, like you know, it's like it's been around. Get over it. So yeah, it's true. The um, um. Well, no, when I was one because I never heard of this thing. So when we're watching the little clip, while you were talking about porn, while you were talking about how it's bad and blah, 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 meanwhile, our character, our, 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 our protagonist just serving all kinds of body, yaddy, yaddy. Did you see just super built and focusing on the pecs? I mean, the, the thing, like they were just throwing in our face and I'm like, Bitch, please! This is this is bordering on softcore animated porn. Also, why there do you think Speaker Johnson watches this? Right, he's grooming his son. That you know what? That's you know, the other part where <laughs> this is a he's grooming got his thing. son on the accountability <laughs> thing. What do they talk about? Yeah, when hey, he, dad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And ah, uh, and I, I don't think you can board playing porn for this, but anything that's exploitive. Yes. So yes. like, so if you're in porn because you had no other option, that's exploitation and I want to find you another option. If you're in porn because you like it and you're good at it, well, that's a choice and I want to honor your choice. Now, if, if your stories are, are, uh, are uh, exploiting, uh, then that's another thing. Like this guy, he said he had, he had uh, abusive images of kids. Mm -hmm. Kids are off limits, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he deserved to be in prison. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, so, and, and, and I realize that in some cultures, you're an adult at 12. This is not that culture. Right. And so there's a power differential, and that's why. It's not yeah. that 14-year-olds yeah. uh, don't have sexual feelings, but if you have all the power, you don't get to get the pleasure. Yeah. Like, you have to, the, the power dynamic. So, yes, it is, it is innately abusive uh, for, for you to be uh, about uh, anybody who is who? Who doesn't have access to the same level of power? They can't get a job. They can't drive. They can't vote. They can't serve in the army. They, they, they they're not old enough to have a high school diploma yet. That individual is just completely off limits, and that that would be your fantasy is also pretty disturbing. Next up, we are excited to tell you about our next adventure with our Global Fellowship. 
And 2024, we are going to where the hills are alive as we explore Austria and Alpine Europe yeah. for Gay Oktoberfest. Uh, join uh, Darrell and Kevin and myself as we journey uh, to enjoy the sound of music space is extremely limited. So make sure to go to happeningout.travel slash sunshine and make your reservation today. Do not delay. Make it happen today.